What is up people? In this video, I'm gonna show you an awesome enumeration tool called Nessus. With Nessus, you can scan a target and uncover all of its vulnerabilities. And this is a really crucial step when it comes to penetration testing or network hacking, which is to actually enumerate and gather more information about the target so that you can find ways to exploit it and get inside the target or get access to the target. Nessus does exactly that. And Nessus will also try to automatically exploit a vulnerability if it suspects the target is vulnerable. So before moving on with the video, I would like to make it very clear that this video is intended only for educational purposes. Do not use Nessus on targets that you do not own or you do not have uh, appropriate permissions to scan because you're not just scanning a target with Nessus. Nessus also tries to automatically exploit a vulnerability if it suspects that the target is vulnerable to a particular exploit. So if you don't have necessary permissions to exploit a target, then you will get into trouble. So do not try Nessus on a target or on a network that you do not own or do you do not have uh, appropriate permissions to test. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. And as always, I'm gonna use Chasm Workspaces, which is a Docker streaming platform that allows you to run Docker apps directly from your browser. So you can just use your browser directly to create uh, containers of Docker images and use them directly from your browser. And in this way, you can keep your workspace isolated from other things. And you can install Chasm Workspaces on your local Linux machine, but I'm gonna do it on my AWS EC2 instance because I like to keep things in cloud. I like to keep things completely separate from my local machine. So I've logged into my instance using Mobile Xterm with the help of SSH. You can use any SSH client you want. So the first step would be to install Chasm Workspaces on my AWS EC2 instance, and it's really simple to do so. Here is an official page that tells you how to install Chasm Workspaces. So you just have to execute these four commands to install Chasm Workspaces. So I'm gonna copy all these four commands, come back to my SSH console, and here I'm gonna create a new file called install.sh and I'm gonna paste all these four commands here, save it, and then I will make it executable using chmod plus x install.sh. And now I will just go ahead and run this with sudo, sudo install.sh. So this is going to install Chasm. I'll pause the video right here and be back when the installation is done. All right, so Chasm is done installing. It also prints you the default username and password that you can make use to log into your Chasm dashboard. So I'm gonna go back to my browser here and I'm gonna to go to HTTPS colon slash slash followed by the IP address of my AWS EC2 instance. Hit enter and this is going to take me to my Chasm Workspaces dashboard where I can log in with my credentials. So I'm just gonna use my credentials here and log in. And over here, I'll go to workspaces and you can see there are no Docker images installed by default. So I'm gonna click on add from registry here and that's going to show you a list of pre-built uh, Docker images that are available to install in Chasm and you can find Nessus in this list here. So I'll just click on install and this is going to download the Docker image of Nessus and install it and set it up on Chasm workspaces. All right, so Nessus, as you can see, is now available to use, but before I go ahead and open it, I'm gonna make some modifications to the configuration. So I'm gonna go to admin here, go to workspaces, and then I'm gonna click on edit. So in the Docker exec config, I'm gonna copy paste this configuration right here. And what this basically does is that it installs OpenVPN when a new container of Nessus is being spawned up. And we need OpenVPN to actually connect to a target's VPN, to a target's network through VPN. For example, if you wanna try Nessus on a Hack the Box machine, for example, then you have to connect to Hack the Box VPN so that you can actually access or scan that target. So in cases like that, you actually need a VPN tool to connect to a target's network infrastructure, to a target's network. And that is what it does. It installs OpenVPN and PIN. And now for the Docker run config override, I'm gonna copy paste this configuration right here. And that should be all. I'll just go ahead and click on save. And I'm gonna go back to workspaces and I will launch Nessus in a new tab. Click on launch session. So before we can use Nessus, we need to actually register. So I'm gonna click on continue here and I'll select register for Nessus Essentials. You don't have to pay anything. You can do this for free. So click on continue. 
and over here you need to get an activation code and in order to do that you need to enter your first name last name and your email and the activation code will be sent to your email now this is completely free you just need to put in your uh, details there to get the activation code but i already have an activation code so i'm just going to click on skip and i will paste my activation code here click on continue and yes click on continue again and that's it it asks you to create a user account let me do that quickly a username and a password click on submit now this is the boring part nessus is now going to download all the plugins and it's going to compile them and this is going to take a lot of time the reason is that nessus has a lot of plugins and it is with the help of these plugins that Nessus will be able to identify vulnerabilities and even exploit them scan different kinds of things on a network etc etc these plugins make all of that possible so I'm gonna pause the video here once again and I'll be right back with the magic of video editing once all the plugins are downloaded and compiled so the plugins are finally done compiling it took me two hours for this to happen so yeah it's a pretty time taking process so the first thing i'm going to do once the plugins are compiled is i'm going to go back to my chasm workspaces dashboard so i'm going to go to admin here go to sessions and over here i'm going to click on create an image so this is going to create a new custom image from the current snapshot of Nessus after the plugins are done downloading and compiling. So in that way, you don't have to re-download and recompile and wait for two hours every time you want to use Nessus on Chasm workspaces. So I'm gonna rename this to Nessus compiled. That'll be it, click on save. And if you come back to workspaces, you can now see a new image called snapshot of Nessus. This is the custom image that we have created. So once the image is created, you can just directly spawn up that image and you don't have to wait for Nessus to download and compile the plugins every time. So I'm gonna come back to Nessus right here and I'll create a new scan. And you can see these are the different types of scans that Nessus supports. For example, there's a scan called host discovery where you can actually give it a range of IP addresses and Nessus will be able to scan the available hosts or in other words, hosts that are currently online and also the open ports of that hosts. And then there is a basic network scan, which is basically a full system scan, which is what we're going to do. And then there's an advanced scan where you can, you know, configure different advanced settings for your scan. There's a malware scan that uh, you can use to scan for malware on Windows and Unix systems. And there is also an Active Directory starter scan where you can actually scan an Active Directory network and so on. You get the idea. There are a lot of different types of scans that you can do with Nessus based on your use case scenario. So in this video, as I said, we're gonna do a basic network scan. So I'm gonna click on that. And over here, I can name my scan. I'll just name it as a basic scan. And I can give a description to explain what my scan is about. And in the target section, this is where you give in the hosts that you want to scan. So in this video, we're going to scan a target called Sumo. This is actually a machine that is available on Proving Grounds Play which is offered by Offsec. And this machine is free to access. So if you want to try this yourself, you can go ahead to offsec.com, create a new account, and then just uh, you know access this machine and exploit it. So in order to actually be able to access this machine, you would need to connect to Offsec's VPN. So I'm gonna download my VPN pack. So now I'm going to move this OpenVPN configuration file to my Nessus so that I can connect to the VPN using OpenVPN. So I'm gonna click on this little arrow icon over here and I'm gonna click on upload and I'll go ahead and select the OpenVPN file. Once the file is uploaded, I'll open a terminal window and if I do ls here, you can see there's a folder called uploads. This is where all the uploaded files will be stored. So I'll go into that folder and this is the file that I need to connect to in order to be able to access this machine on the Proving Grounds Play platform. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to the VPN using OpenVPN and the command to do so would be sudo openvpn followed by the configuration file which is universal.ovpn. So if I hit enter, that's going to connect me to Proving Grounds Play VPN and I will now be able to access all the machines. So I'm gonna go ahead and start 
uh, this machine right here that's called Sumo, which is the machine that we will be scanning in this video. Uh, looks like the machine is up and running. So I'm just gonna copy the IP address of the machine. So I'm gonna do a basic ping on the machine like this to see if I'm actually able to reach the machine. And you can see I'm getting the response from the machine, which means I am able to reach the machine. So we can now go ahead and start our scan. So I'll come back to Nessus and I'm gonna give the IP address of the machine as a target. And before I go ahead and save this scan and start it, there are multiple options that you can configure for your scan. For example, if I go to discovery here, uh, the default scan type is going to be common ports, but you can change this to scan all the ports and not just the common ports, or you can set it to custom. And when you set it to custom, you get different options where you can actually set if you want to ping the remote host or not, if you want to, uh, if you want to send ping packets to the host or not, you can configure that here. And you can see if you want to ping the host, which ping methods do you want to use and all that kinds of good stuff. And then you can go to port scanning and you can give a range for your port scan. For example, if you want to scan ports from one to thousand, you can give that range here. And I'm going to select this option that says consider unscanned ports as closed. And yeah, that's all the modifications that I want to do to my scan. So I'll just go ahead and click on save. And now I'll click on this play button that says launch and that's going to start my scan. Now I just have to sit back and wait for Nessus to scan the target and come up with the reports on whether the target is vulnerable and if it is vulnerable, how to exploit those vulnerabilities and all that stuff. So the time taken for the scan actually depends on the scan itself. For example, if you're doing an all port scan, which means you're scanning all the ports from zero to 65,000 ports, then it's obviously going to take a lot of time because Nessus is going to scan every port. But if you're only doing common ports, it's going to take lesser time. And it also depends on the target that you're scanning. If the target appears to be vulnerable to multiple vulnerabilities, Nessus is going to try to figure out if it's actually vulnerable and it's going to actually exploit that. So it also depends on the target. So the scan is done and if I click on it, I can see some very juicy results. So if I go to the vulnerabilities tab over here, you can see Nessus was able to find these vulnerabilities on the target. Now I'm going to target the second vulnerability right here, which has a severity of critical. It says GNU bash multiple issues. So if I click on it, it's going to show me two vulnerabilities that exist in GNU bash. So the first vulnerability says GNU bash environment variable handling code injection, which is also famously known as the shell shock vulnerability. So it looks like our target is vulnerable to shell shock vulnerability and Nessus was able to find it. So if I just click on this vulnerability, Nessus is going to show you the description of that particular vulnerability that it found. It says, the remote web server is affected by a command injection vulnerability in GNU bash known as Shellshock. And if you scroll down, you can look in the output section, Nessus says that it was able to exploit this issue using the following request. So not only did Nessus detect that the target is vulnerable, it also went ahead and was able to exploit that vulnerability. And it is also telling us how it was able to exploit that vulnerability. It was able to exploit it by sending a request to this endpoint with these parameters. So let's go ahead and see if Nessus was not lying. If this vulnerability actually exists and if you are able to actually exploit the shell shock vulnerability. So I'm going to go ahead and do the exact thing that Nessus did, which is to send a get request to this endpoint. So I went ahead and asked ChatGPT to give me a curl one liner command to send this request. And here is the command that it gave me. So I'm just going to copy this command, come back to my uh, Nessus and I'm going to open a terminal window and I'm going to paste this command. So what this is basically going to do is it's going to send the same request that Nessus sent in order to exploit the shell shock vulnerability. So let me go ahead and send this and you can see right here that we are actually able to exploit that vulnerability. This is the same output that Nessus told it got and this is the output for this command 
that we injected in the request. So we're basically printing out the contents of user slash bin slash ID, which is the same thing as executing the ID command on a Linux terminal. So we just uncovered a command injection vulnerability called Shellshock on our target, and we can use the information that Nessus gave us, in particular, this request that Nessus was able to send to exploit the vulnerability to further do my research on the target. For example, I can change the command that I'm injecting here, and by doing so, I can actually get a reverse shell to the target. It's a great tool to scan the targets and uncover all of its vulnerabilities. For example, this is not the only vulnerability that Nessus was able to find. It also tells you that the Unix operating system of the target is unsupported, which means it's probably not secure because it's no longer being supported. So in this way, you can reveal all the vulnerabilities of a target and even get a report on how to exploit these vulnerabilities. And another great thing about Nessus is that it also gives you remediations. For example, if I go to the remediations tab over here, it gives you the solution to fix that particular vulnerability. In this case, it gave us the remediation for the shell shock vulnerability, and it says you need to apply the referenced patch. So this is another great way to scan your network for potential vulnerabilities and get remediation advices from Nessus on how to fix those vulnerabilities. So that will be all for this video. Hope you liked it. Hope you learned something new. If you did like this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below and also leave a comment in the comment section. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.